This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. For a free 10-day unlimited trial, visit lynda.com slash macvoices. And by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter for Mac Voices viewers and listeners. Get the inside scoop on all the Mac Voices news by visiting macvoices.com slash newsletter to subscribe. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we're trying to get a little bit ahead of some of the updates that are coming out, at least to some of the publications and books that we know, love, and depend on. That's what we're doing here this time with Mr. Jeff Carlson. Jeff, it's great to have you back again. Hi, I love being back. Thank you. Yeah, this, this is becoming a regular thing. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so you are just finishing up updating uh, Apple Watch, a take control crash course to version 1.2, I believe. Yes. Yes. So this is not a full edition update. It's more of just a, a supplemental update. But I think Apple Watch is so important. And there's so many people out there that are going to be getting watches, Apple Watches for the holidays, that we want to make sure we have the, 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 the best information for them available, both here on Mac Voices and obviously at take control. Yeah, that's exactly the idea. I mean, th this this book is is taking kind of an interesting history because it's, um, you know, we we released it before the watch came out as a as a one that was very much a like like here's everything we know about the watch, um, you know, based on, you know, what what was available at the time, you know, with just like only a few minutes of hands on time when it was announced when I was down uh, in California for that. And then the the big 1.1 update was okay, now that we've been using this, now that I've got my hands on it, here's, you know, the real meaty update. Um, and since then, Apple has released watchOS 2, which, you know, in many ways is kind of the the update that I think we wished um, Apple had launched with. Um, because it adds things like you know native apps and um, you know, things like that, um, but Apple couldn't do that because they the, the the developer kit wasn't ready and things like that. So basically, this is an update that says, okay, you know, we're uh, I want to update everything that has the the most current features. Uh, so that somebody you know who is just now picking up the book or just now getting a watch. Um, you know, they'll be up to date on on what they're seeing and um, tracking, you know, things that have changed in that time. With the with the crash course uh, format, and we should talk about that for just a second. Mm -hmm. This is not necessarily a front to back kind of book. This is more a you know, pick your recipe, pick your project, and go and see what what you have to say about it. So I don't know exactly how many. I call them recipes, but I guess chapters um, is a better phrase. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many are in there, but how many did you have to update as a result of WatchOS 2? Um, well, I think just about everything um, got a little bit of an update. Um, so, you know, for example, um, you know, being able to tell time uh, on the watch, you know, that that hasn't changed significantly. But um, there's a new feature called uh, time lapse. That lets you um, basically scroll the the digital crown, um, move the hands of the clock ahead, and just sort of see what's coming up in your day. You know, if you have complications that that show, let's say, meetings or to do items or things like that. So um, you know, like a, a lot of little things throughout the entire book um, are are updated or changed. Um, we, we're also implementing. A little bit of a structural shift. Um, at the very beginning, the book had a chapter about um, the Apple Watch and the competition, um, and that was because, you know, with, with the first edition of the book, we're expecting that some people would would buy it and, you know, do so to evaluate, like, okay, is is an Apple Watch for me, um, and, and what can it do? Well, now that it's out, now that you know, people can actually go to an Apple store and get some hands on time with it. Um, we don't really need to say, you know, well, you know, this is different from Android in this way or what have you. So, so some of that information, which a lot of it was really um, focused on like activity trackers and uh, fitness companions um, have been 
restructured and moved into the the activity fitness exercise portion of the book. So um, you know changes like that. Jeff, do you do you touch on uh, third party apps in a specific fashion or just a, a generic fashion? Because there is so much to offer, which with Apple's own apps and the watch itself. Um, it, it's it's a, a more general. Um, uh, touch on those, um, except for things like um, uh, setting specific uh, complications. So, for example, um, I mentioned um, I use OmniFocus to track my my to do lists. Well, the the um, OmniFocus app for the uh, iPhone now before it had a a Watch OS component that basically. You know, was just a little front end that talked to the phone. All of the the original uh, third party apps had to be that way. It was just like a little a little shell, and the, the phone did all the work. Um, with OmniFocus, they now have a a native app that runs on the watch, and the watch the the app itself isn't much different in functionality than what was there before. Um, although it, it launches a bit faster and it's a little more responsive. But you can choose to have uh, an OmniFocus complication on your, um, on your watch face. So, for example, um, I have one that, that just, you know, it tells me if I have any scheduled to-dos, it'll say, all right, this is your next thing. Um, and then once, once that gets done, you can tap the complication to jump right to the app, um, mark that thing as done, and then it'll show you the next thing. So that you don't have to, you know, go and dig through all of your your to do items when you're sort of stuck or floundering trying to figure out what to do next. You can just, you know, literally look at your wrist and say, "Oh, right, I need to go mail this thing, or I need to finish this article, or whatever." Ever, I, I don't want to take us too far away from the book, but you're mm -hmm. someone that has spent a lot of time with the Apple Watch and and apps, and especially Watch OS too. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of predictions out there that watchOS 2 would make a big difference in the usability of the Apple Watch, that it was be, would turn into a bit more than just an extension of what we could do with, with our iPhone. Do, mm -hmm. you, do you think that promise has been realized? I think the promise has been inched forward a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, you know, I, I think um, to a lot of people surprised me too. Um, there hasn't been a giant jump in you know like a big flood of of, of native apps um, my suspicion and again you know this is where i say i'm i'm not a programmer so you know of course it looks easy to me um <laughs> and you know, the developers are like oh are you kidding um but i have a feeling that so my, my gut feeling about this is that uh developers are trying to figure out how to make it work and how to make it work right um how to do a third-party app that you know isn't just like a, a a mirror of of what you can find on your iPhone, um, and and I think um, I read an article. I'm trying to remember where I saw this. Um, maybe it was at MacWorld. It, it was an article um, where the author talked to a few um, fitness trackers and and um, you know asking because one of the things that Watch OS two does it. Um, gives developers access to um, like the the heart rate data and um, you know the more of the sensors that um, that are in play when you're exercising and there hasn't been a big rush of of apps to really take advantage of that yet and I know at least one developer I think a developer of runkeeper um, you know said well you know actually, Taking all that data and accessing it and doing something with it ended up being a lot more difficult than they thought. So, um, you know, my my gut feeling is um, we we will see improvements in terms of of third party native apps, but we're not quite there yet. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, there's also that that aspect of you know, developers are 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 very geared toward writing an app that that does something that's you know that, that you interact with that you're active with and the watch doesn't exactly fit that model like it, it it really is overall this accessory that can be extremely useful in many situations but it's not something that you're just going to focus all of your attention on so you know trying to trying to get that right trying to to 
to get that balance of, um, you know, having that, that, that Apple ethos of, you know, being clean and having good design and, and making a good experience rather than, oh, hey, here's another screen I can shove pixels at. So, you know, maybe that's a slightly optimistic view. Um, I don't know for sure, but that's, like I said, that's my gut feeling. Today's Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. Get a full free 10-day trial at lynda.com slash macvoices. I've been telling you now for some time about the breadth of topics that lynda.com covers. With almost 4,000 titles in a wide variety of disciplines, both tech and non-tech. This time, though, I want to make sure you understand the depth of lynda.com's offerings. Let's say that you're interested in photography. lynda.com currently has 569 courses under the photography category, with 26,199 video tutorials, so you can see exactly what you're trying to learn. Topics like street photography, Lightroom, Photo Magico, Photoshop Elements, the practicing photographer, and many, many more. So no matter what kind of deep dive you want to take in photography, lynda.com has you covered. Or maybe you're interested in business. lynda.com has 1,351 courses with 53,467 video tutorials. Now that's depth. In that category, you can see courses on customer service, decision making, Excel, Office 365, communications, LinkedIn, project management, the list goes on and on. And with over 1,300 courses, I really mean it goes on. And those are only two of the broad categories at lynda.com. To appreciate it, you really need to do two things. First, visit lynda.com slash macvoices and do some browsing. Type something you're interested in in the search box and watch the list of courses and videos appear. Then do it again with a different subject. And again, you're going to realize just how valuable lynda.com can be to you. Then, while you're still using the link lynda.com slash macvoices, sign up for a free, unlimited 10-day trial. You can go back and watch any of the courses you just found, or pick something else, because your trial gives you access to the entire lynda.com library. Every course, no limitations for 10 days. Watch as much as you wish about whatever you wish, then sign up and keep on learning. That's lynda.com slash macvoices for your free 10-day trial to get access to an unparalleled library of learning video materials and to let lynda.com know that you appreciate their support of Mac Voices. Thanks to Linda for being a sponsor of this week's Mac Voices. I, I think that that's a very realistic assessment of the situation. I, I'm kind of glad that we're not seeing a lot of people just rush to stuff things on the Apple Watch. I think yeah. th I think there was that tendency at the beginning, but I don't think it's kind of continued as much because I, I a lot of us went through the thing of, oh, yeah, I'll just – everything on my phone, I'll just sync over to my watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and 90% of it wasn't worth anything. And so mm -hmm. as a result, the experience of what the Apple Watch could do I think was a little diluted. Um, but I'm with you. I think developers are slowly working their way forward. I think we have to change some of our expectations too. This is the device that's on your wrist. It has, it, it's a, a 38 or 42 millimeter screen. You know, it's it's not a big screen. If, if if I want if I want this, I will take it and strap it to my arm, and then I've got the world's biggest eye watch, Apple mm -hmm. Watch, and that's great. <laughs> but it's not realistic. And we also have the little issue of battery power, that yeah. you you want it to last for what it does. But if it's constantly going back and forth, you're you're not going to put it on Wi-Fi anytime soon until battery mm -hmm. technology gets a lot better. So I think we have to set our expectations of what this device can do. That it's 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 going to be great for vo voice recognition in conjunction with our phones. It's going to be great for a lot of things, but it's not going to replace our phones anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, and, and I think that's. That's kind of the, the 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 status of the watch in general right now. I mean, I've, um, you know, I I always get people asking me like, you know, hey, you know, what do you think of this? I mean, I was at I was at a holiday party a couple of weeks ago, and um, I had a watch, and a friend of mine had a watch, and um, a friend of mine who 
who was hosting the party used to have a watch and he just wasn't using it. So he sold his. And there was another woman that I didn't know and she had one. And so she was like, you know, oh, you know, what do you think? And my, my other friend who had a watch, he's like, well, you know, it's like, I don't know if I would buy it again because you know he's, he's like all it really does is notifications and you know i almost piped in and i was like well you can do a lot more and then i realized that i wasn't working this was a, you know social <laughs> engagement you don't want to be that guy <laughs> exactly yeah. um well i wrote the book on it so yeah. <laughs> listen to me um <laughs> but uh you know like there are a lot of people who who are expecting you know, a, a, a phone or they're, you know, they're expecting something that is going to demand their attention and the watch just really doesn't do that. Um, you know, my, my suspicion about the, the whole watch ecosystem, um, Apple's uh, anyway, um, is that I think there are a lot of people waiting on the fence to see how it shakes out. You know, b before they spend three hundred, four hundred dollars um, on getting one, um, you know, and and it's it's you know, we've said this ever since it was announced, and we'll probably say it for a while longer. Like it's still really early days. Um, you know, this technology is here. Apple continues to work on it. Um, you know, add features and things like that. But um, you know, like like it's almost uncharted territory so um you know especially for for people who who aren't um you know developers or who aren't really technologically inclined who would know that they can you know program widgets for their phone or you know i have a i have a wonderful friend who like he is he is a gearhead to the max and i think he's owned pretty much any uh watch that has come out and you know like like he's on top of it like like he wants to develop things and he wants to hack into it and all that stuff and you know every once in a while i have to be like you know buddy you are not like most people and the watch is designed for most people it's designed for people who don't you know want to deal with a whole lot of syncing and 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 all of that stuff um and so you know we, we have to keep in mind that that Apple is designing and and making this thing that's for the average person who is not into computers or who, you know who has a phone, and so how do you make this thing work together really well? And um, and you know that that's also the 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 impetus behind doing the the crash course book for someone who you know they want to know how to do stuff, but they don't necessarily you know need to know every single little gut and wire inside it but they want to know all right you know how can i make this work really easily when i go on a run you know there's a new feature where you can just say you know hey siri start a 30 minute run Oop, hang on <laughs> <laughs> oops uh okay I, I i just triggered that sorry about that <laughs> which may but, yeah. be a, maybe a good advertisement for just how well uh, Siri works on the Apple Watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's why I was glad to see a crash course format book from Take Control for the Apple Watch. I think it is the perfect way to tell people this is what you can do with it and this is how you do it, as opposed mm -hmm. to trying to do a walkthrough of, all right, this is what the crown can do and this is what the surface can do and this is what the button can do. You know, right, you, right. You, you will pick that up if you follow the crash course recipes and mm -hmm. decide, you know, I mean, if you're not a runner, then starting that run is not important. Maybe managing your addresses or doing reminders is, but it, it's it's one where you can pick and choose what you want and then learn how to do it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, and, and you know, I wanna make sure folks don't think that, that either one of us are being defensive of the Apple Watch with the comments. I, I think it is, it, it's going to be an evolutionary product because it, it is such a new product that creates a whole new category for Apple. And arguably, it has created a whole new category of product for everyone. I know there were some Android devices, Android watches out there before. Obviously, there have been fitness trackers longer than that. But this is a whole different thing, and it really does something really beneficial and useful if it's what you want to do. And if not, it, it's probably not right for everyone yet, but it'll get there. Well. And, you know, I, I think that's a key that a lot of people overlook. Um, you know, it's it's great for some people. For some people, 
it's just not it's not useful at all and that's okay you know like like <laughs> you don't have to go buy an apple watch i think that if you buy an apple watch that you will probably find some things about it that are helpful in many ways um you know i mean uh i think i i probably go on too much about this but you know having having notifications pop up on my wrist um you know is is extremely helpful to me it, it it's not like it's you know, I can quantifiably say, you know, it's taken a, an hour of productivity and given it back to me during the day. But, um, you know, I have, for example, I have people that I've set up as VIPs in my mail app on the phone. These are people that, that if, they're, if they send me something, I want to know when they send it to me so that I don't miss anything important. You know, uh, my editors, my family, etc. And so um, I have it set up so that any VIP or any message that comes from a VIP goes straight to my watch. And so I can see right away, oh, Tanya needs me to respond to an edit or something like that. Um, you know, like, like that's incredibly important to me. It's, it is something that, you know, only occupies maybe, you know, 10 seconds of my attention, but it, it's just that, that, that alert that tells me, okay, here's something important. Um, or, Surprisingly, one of the things that I use um, most, I love the fact that when a phone call comes in, I get, um, you know, it, it also comes in on the watch and I can see who's calling. And if it's not a number that I know, I can just dismiss it and send the person to voicemail. I don't have to find my phone, dig for it, you know, like it might be in my pocket, it might be in my, my bag, it might be on a table somewhere. Um, I could be driving, you know. And so, like, I can do a quick glance and a little tap, and, and it sends the person to voicemail. And then, if it's important, they'll they'll leave a message. If it's another scammer, which it usually is, you know, it it just goes away, and that's it. Like, I don't have to stress about it at all. Yeah. So things I, like that. I, I've had people say to me, "Well, so what you're saying, it's it's just a device for convenience." And it's like, well, if you, if if that's what it is for you. That wouldn't that be enough? I mean, for me, it's much more. But I, I but but if if it's just for the convenience of knowing who's calling, or mm -hmm. you know, seeing those really important updates that come to your wrist, I, I mean, we all spend a, an embarrassing amount of money on convenience for other <laughs> products and other parts of our oh, lives. Yeah. Why is all of a sudden convenience such a bad thing with a, with a, a smartwatch? I, if, yeah. if anything, I think that's that's an incredible selling feature that. It's depending on how much you value convenience, and, and apparently I value it highly because I've, I I don't I will not give up my watch. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, and also you know little things like, um, you know, it, it's also not exactly what you do with the watch; it's what you don't do with the phone. So you know I'm I am as guilty as probably a lot of people. Um, if I need to check something on my phone, well, you know maybe I sh I, I should just you know slide over and check my email, or you know oh I'll just spend a minute looking at Facebook, you know, and then, you know, sometimes you just fall into that rabbit hole and, and, you know, 10 minutes have gone by and, uh, you know, your house is on fire and your kids are running away or something, you know, like that. Um, uh, I, I might be exaggerating, but, you know, um, I can, I can see things that, you know, whether it's, you know, someone has, has tweeted something to me or uh, an email message or, you know, a timer has gone off, something like that. And I don't have that, that temptation of, oh, well, I will just spend a minute and check these five other things, um, you know, which like, like that's, that's the time suck. That's the attention suck. So, um, you know, like, like that for me, that convenience is, is totally worth it. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you there. And that's a really interesting way to look at it. It's a little bit of judo, uh, Jeff Carlson judo. <laughs> it's not what you can do with the watch. It's what you don't have to do with the phone. I, I think yeah. that's, that's a fascinating way to look at it. Jeff, describe some of the things that uh, some, of, some of the, I don't know, what, what is the right term? What do you guys use? Uh, I call them recipes, but um, projects, uh, tasks that you, um, can, that you cover in the book. I think we we still go by by chapters, kind of. I think maybe okay. just because we're all 
we're, we're old book people, so yeah. <laughs> we're going chapters. Um, well, so, you know, it the, the book covers um, a, a lot of the basics, gets you familiar with um, using uh, notifications and the digital crown and, and, and all of that. Um, uh, but there, there are chapters specific to um, exercising, um, which, you know, even if you don't exercise um, in the way that a lot of people think, which basically describes me that I need to exercise more, um, you know, you you have um, the the stand reminders, and you have your um, you know sort of a, a a general calorie goal, like movement goals through the day that I found, you know, are are, are very helpful in just you know getting me out of my my desk chair. Um, you know, I I know a lot of people can can sympathize with that because, you know, even if you are active, you get focused, you get involved in something and then suddenly three hours have gone by and your back is sore, et cetera. So, you know, that, that kind of, of motion, um, Apple added a thing, um, which, so at, at 10 minutes to the hour, if you've not been moving around, you'll get a, a little stand reminder. Um, it'll say time to stand. And um, they, I think they acknowledged that that some people were getting tired of that. So in WatchOS 2, there's a new option that just says mute for today, which is all right, fine, I'm busy, shut up until tomorrow, <laughs> and <laughs> and and then start start notifying me. So you know it covers things like that. Um, there there are things like um, um, uh, using Apple Pay. And wallet, uh, which used to be called Passbook, um, you know how how to get things into into the wallet and um, how to uh, reply to email messages. That's that's something that's new in WatchOS too. Um, what else do we have? Um, controlling media, um, which a, a, a nice thing is that um, the the remote app. Um, will let you control your Apple TV, and actually, now that the the new Apple TV works with the the new version of the remote app, um, you know you can you know just you know, play, pause, skip ahead, things like that, just on on your watch, so you don't have to go find your phone or your remote. Um, gosh, what else? Um, I've added a section on what to do if your your watch is lost or stolen, so. Um, Apple added a thing called activation lock. So when you have find my find my iPhone turned on on your phone, it automatically turns on activation lock on the watch, which means that if you do lose your watch or it gets stolen or or you know misplaced or whatever, um, you can can uh, mark it as missing. Um, and what that does is that that. Uh, basically sends a signal to Apple servers that say, "Hey, this watch is is no longer available," and it will it will wipe it and make sure that um, not only can can no one pull any data off of it, um, they can't pair it with any other device without your your um, Apple ID and passcode. So you know, like like it's a nice it's a nice security feature. Um, and then you know, if if you realize that oh it the watch slipped off and it's behind the couch cushions, then you just repair it and everything's all hunky dory again. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just, just, a, just a lot of things that you could specifically do with the watch and, and, yeah. and again, a lot of it primarily has to do with the functions of the watch itself, not with the third party apps. So primarily. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I guess at this point we have to ask the the, the obvious questions. Do we the, the pricing of the book? Do you have the upgrade policy yet? Because we are trying to work a little bit ahead. So mm -hmm. the, the book mm -hmm. is technically not actually on the streets as we record this, but will be very soon. Right. Right. Um, I think um, unless unless things changed and Tanya will you know come after me about this, um, this is going to be a, a free update to anybody who's who's purchased the the book before. Um, I think you know the, the the next edition will probably happen um, when Apple announces like a brand new watch or a watch OS three or you know whatever is coming up in the next year. Um, but but for this, you know, this is is bringing it up to date to what's current, so that uh, people who who buy it for the first time can you know have all all the good information about it. Great, it's good to see you again. 
Uh, I know it seems like we've been talking to you recently a lot, but you've just been busy a lot. You've been busy re- releasing all kinds of stuff. It's good to be busy. Yes, it, it is. <laughs> it is. So I hope this this trend will continue into the coming months, so we get to see a lot more. Same here. Yeah. Right. Good. So Jeff Carlson, uh, Apple Watch. I take control crash course version one point two. It's it's out. If you're seeing this, it's out. Go get it. <laughs> um, the, whether you're upgrading it or whether you're buying it new, but if, especially if you got uh, an Apple Watch for the holidays or are getting an Apple Watch for the holidays, uh, you really, really will benefit from this book. Jeff, take care. Thank you very much, folks. You take care too. I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is Mac Voices. Thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at MacVoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard, by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.